let's discuss in a little bit more detail the constraints. So just as a reminder, a problem described in language of linear programming consists of two elements, goal function and constraints. When it comes to constraints, we can have a plenty of equations that limit our choices and help us pick the optimal solution given the goal function. Below, we have an example of constraints from the previous case study devoted to the burger production. So we had uh, three constraints that described our situation with the resources we had. So this is describing the situation with the limited number of buns. Here we've got the meat and obviously another constraint on the cheese. We also had two additional constraints on the quantity of classical burgers. So we obviously wanted not to have negative values for that. So these type of constraints we had there. And as you can notice in a typical constraint, we have two sides, the left one and the right one, and there is sign between them. We will quite often use this name in our discussion. So the things on the left, we call it the left-hand side, and it describes to what extent certain product or activity is used by a certain variable. And for every resource, we usually have a specific unit usage, in other words, the parameter. So for example, in case of this equation, we know that the Z, so in this case, it was the classical burgers were using two units of this resource to produce one unit of classical burger, whereas when it comes to the cheeseburger, we just needed one unit of this resource. So this is the left hand side. Obviously, we have also the right hand side, and this describes us simply how much of a given resource we have. In some cases, it is what we have to achieve. So it also can be used to set additional production goal. For example, as we had in the case of the burgers, we wanted them to be above zero in the first option and above two in the second option. So in short, we always have a left hand side and right hand side left hand side describes us to what extent certain resources used by our production plan, our variables, and then right hand side describes our resources or goal. Obviously, we also have the sign uh, between the left hand side and right hand side. And let's go briefly how you should interpret uh, this sign. So if it's like this, so we have equal or smaller, then it means that I cannot use or deliver more than what is on the right hand side. In this case, I cannot use more than 10 units in total of the resource that the equation relates to. So the production for Z and Y, so in our case study with the classical burgers and cheeseburgers cannot in total use more than 10 of my resource. Now, if we have bigger or equal to, then it means that I have to use deliver at least what is on the right hand side. Obviously, I can deliver also more. You can also interpret this in a little bit different manner. So it may suggest you if it relates to a resource, you would have to use at least 10 units of this resource in total. And finally, we can have just the sign equal. And this obviously means that I have to use the lever exactly specified number on the right hand side. So I have to, in this case, use or deliver exactly 10 units in total of this resource that the equation relates to. So it can be equal or smaller, bigger or equal, and then equal. The last thing on the constraints is what you actually can use the constraints uh, to describe. So first of all, obviously, I can use the constraints to describe certain limited resource I want to allocate. So it can be tools, machines, people. Obviously, I can also use constraints to describe limited materials, like we had in the case of the production burgers, where the constraints were defining how many buns, meat and cheese we've got. We can also, in a similar manner, use it to describe certain limited time that we have on certain tools, machines. In some cases where we have more than one goal, we can put some of the goals in a form of a constraint. So for example, as we had in the option two in the case study, our goal was to have at least two cheeseburgers and two classical burgers. Since we can just have one goal function, we put the goal of having at least two cheeseburger and classical burger as a constraint. So you can also use the constraints to define certain goals, additional goals we want to achieve. The fifth thing you can use the constraints to describe is the restriction on the amount. So we can define the minimal or the maximal value on the amount. And finally, I can also describe the relation between elements, between variables. So for example, I can define that the production of a certain good should be bigger or smaller by a certain amount from the production of other good. So I can also do that using the constraints. In other words, constraints are very versatile tool that enables you to describe your limitation on resources, materials, time, but also add additional goals, show how the demand may behave, and also show the relation between certain elements, certain variables.